tonight I'm going to be demonstrating my homemade x-ray machine. This is a project I've wanted to do for quite some time, um, but obviously I've had severe reservations about safety, uh, etc. But I feel that I've set this up in such a way that it minimizes all risk of being exposed to ionizing radiation. For one, this is a dental x-ray head. It's relatively low energy x-rays to begin with. They don't penetrate too far. Which is kind of a bummer when x-raying heavy metal objects, but at the same time, for the things I am imaging, it's more than sufficient 90% of the time. Uh, secondly, I have not modified any of the lead shielding, so it's all original, which results in a very fine collimator beam coming only out the bottom. There's still scattered uh, backscatter radiation, but that's dealt with in the way of distance. So this whole thing I have automated on a PLC, um, so I'm nowhere near the unit when it operates. We're also in a cabin at the moment, which is nowhere near any other buildings, um, and there's an audible alarm that goes off when the exposure begins. So those are the basic safety precautions I've put in place. Now let's dig into more of the technical side of it. So as I've discussed, this is the x-ray head at the top. That's what produces the actual x-rays themselves. It's a fully contained unit. It has the filament transformer, high voltage transformer, and the uh, x-ray tube built into one unit. Here on this middle shelf is where you would actually place your subject, such as a hand. I do not recommend that, I've never tried it, but maybe one day I might. Um, it would be no different to getting a commercial x-ray, so we'll see. And down the bottom is the, um, the, I don't know what you call it, the imaging portion of it. It's where the actual image is taken and digitized. If we remove this black art cover here, you'll see that what we have is uh, a phosphor screen that illuminates when high energy x-rays hit it, and that's how you get the image. It's very similar to shadows. So you imagine you've got a torch and you shine it at something. It's, it works on shadows, except those shadows are able to penetrate objects. Next we have a mirror pointed roughly at 45 degrees and then we've got a camera pointing at that mirror. As you can see on the screen here, that's the actual image the phone is picking up. The reason I have done this is because when high energy x-ray, if I put the phone directly underneath, uh, underneath the screen, when high energy x-ray hits the CCD, it causes it to malfunction because it's so much more energy than it's expecting to receive, which results in a really high powered white dot. If you expose it to that for, for too long, it will destroy the CCD or at least damage it. So that's the reason that that mirror uh, is tilted 45 degrees. It doesn't stop all the radiation from hitting the CCD but it stops um, quite a bit of it. Here you'll see a lightning port that's not for charging. That is a modified uh, headphone cable. So I don't know if you're aware of this but on the iPhone you can use the volume up and volume down button to take a snapshot. And I have modified that and connected it to the PLC. So when the x-ray tube begins x-raying, it will automatically trigger the exposure. I have a custom app on the phone, which is, um, I think it's called Long Exposure or something, and it allows me to set things such as ISO, shutter speed, and focus. The problem I was having, I used to use a video, and I just started the video and walked out without triggering it automatically, is it would not stay in focus, and it wasn't the best quality image. So hopefully we'll get some nice images out of it tonight. Okay, that's enough of that section. We'll put the blackout cover back on and move back a bit further. Here we have the room Geiger counter. So this is constantly 24 seven monitoring radiation levels. And you can see most of the time it's pretty average on about 30 to 40 counts per minute, which is pretty much typical for background radiation. You can see a few spikes here, that's from when I was doing the experimentation earlier. So you can see it gets up to about 600 counts per minute, which is quite substantial. And uh, Geiger counters don't actually measure uh, X-ray radiation correctly. They become overwhelmed, uh, it's a lot more than they, than they say it is. If you want to accurately measure X-ray radiation, you're better to use an ion chamber. So this is just a rough reflection, just saying roughly how much uh, is being put out. Obviously, I'm nowhere near the room when these occur. Okay, finally, we have the um, phone has been remotely mirrored to this computer here. 
so I can just have a rough sense of what's going on, see if it's taken exposure, and see what the photo looks like. Um, yeah. Up here we have the X-ray warning sign, so it's got a strobe on it that begins to flash when the process starts, just to let people know that they should not be entering this room when the X-ray is under, um, when it's operating. And finally, we have the X-ray controller itself. So here you have the exposure set button, so you can choose either 0.5 second exposure or three second exposure. I've been sticking to three seconds at the moment because I don't have a great camera, but if I had a DSLR, 0.5 would be much safer because that's not a very long exposure at all. You've got your start button and you've got your abort button. What I'll do now is since the X-ray head itself is actually turned off, I'll do a dry run uh, without it being turned on and I'll show you how it works. So let's click the start button now and you will see the strobe begins to flash. Here's the audible alarm and in a couple of seconds the x-ray head would turn on and begin to image. Okay I just heard it click and you can see this is now shooting the image. Okay, there's the image. You can see it's very dull because of that blackout box, um, but that's, you can see there, that's the intensifying screen right there around the edge there, um, and the image would be in the middle. Okay, I'm going to set up the camera, and then we're going to um, find something to x-ray, and we'll see that in action. Try x-ray, uh, maybe some headphones. Okay, it looks like it's worked this time, which is good. So, you can see on the Geiger counter here, you probably saw that the first time, but we're sitting at about uh, 10 microsieverts. Again, as I said earlier, that's not an accurate reflection of how much um, ionizing radiation has hit the Geiger tube, as it's not very good at measuring x-rays. Having a look at the actual image itself, um, you can see rough details, but what we'll do now is we'll move this image onto a computer and we'll have a closer look at it. You can see it in much higher quality there. I will insert a photo uh, in the video. I've probably already done that in post. Uh, but you can see a really clear outline. So you've got your earmuffs here. There's your actual coil in the middle. So I'm quite happy with the detail that I'm getting out of it now. Um, when I was doing the video recording, it was very low quality. So yeah. I'll insert some other photos now of the other x-rays I've taken. Um, you'll see how they start at really low quality and with this new setup they've um, jumped to quite a higher resolution. I may have brushed over a few things, but I think this is a good place to leave it. Um, let me know if you want to see more content like this, just some odd projects on the side. Again, I will say it, this uh, project is quite dangerous, definitely don't recommend doing it at home. Um, if you did go ahead and do it anyway, make sure that you're taking other people's safety into consideration, because it's not something to be mucking around with. Um, especially if you're in a crowded place or multi-tenancy building, definitely do not do this because you do not want to be putting other people's safety at, uh, at risk. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next video.